Shari Kedusha, Chilik Alev, Shar Beis, says, Yehav Kol Habrios Apilu Nachi. Can't get more material. Some say that's a Midas Chasidus. Okay, it's a Midas Chasidus. Why also person have to love Goyim, surely not hate them if they're not Rishoyim. Before we left Mitzrayim, the Kaddish Baruch who made a nace that the Rishonim say was the greatest nace of Yitzhiya's Mitzrayim. In Asati Eschein Ha'om Azeb Eini Mitzrayim. That we left in the Mitzrayim, we were charming in the eyes of the Mitzrayim. Now, if the whole purpose was that they should give us their gold and silver, we didn't have to be charming. They just had to be afraid of us. They had to be terrified of us. They would take the gold and silver. Just leave me alone. The Rebosho didn't have to make a nace. The, the midstream should have hated us. So much sorrows they had because of us. And the Rebosho made a nace that not only didn't they hate us, they were enamored with us. What was the purpose of the Russia doesn't do an Eastern for no purpose. But we've explained in the past, the kids are. The purpose of this world is that every creature, especially human beings, should recognize that there's a Rabbana Shalom. And the Rabbana Shalom is concerned. But Goyim also recognize him. And the Mekadish Shmo, saying this week, said, the Torah is your Chochman being on the eyes of the nations of the world. Who cares what the Goyim said? Says the Ibn Ezra, according to one Pshat, the Mitzrim that will survive will at least know there's a God. According to another Pshat, the Ibn Ezra, talking about the midst are going to drown. But at least for a few seconds before they drown, they'll know there's a God. It means it was worth the entire Kriyas Yamsu. What's the purpose of Kriyas Yamsu? The Yodu Mitzrayim, Kiyam Yashem. It was worth the entire Kriyas Yamsu that a few Goyim should know there's a God for a few seconds. Therefore, the Rabbanu Shem wanted us to know that that's really the goal. That's the purpose. And even though we're going to go and be in many Goliaths, and Goyim are going to hate us, and they're going to mock us, you should never think that that's the ideal. The ideal is, before we left Mitzrayim, the first Geula was the Nasaki Eschein Ha'am. That's the goal. The goal is that Klai Yisrael should represent the Rabban Shalom to the world and bring COVID to the Rabban Shalom, to the, all the nations of the world. If it's not like that, then there's something wrong. Now she says, when is when will the Goyim say, Am Chachon the Navon, Agoya God Lazer, when we keep the mitzvahs properly? But if we don't keep them properly, Atem Nechshavim Kishot, then we'll be considered like fools. People think that if the Goyim make fun of us, or even if Yidin make fun of us, it must be that we're keeping the mitzvahs really good. They're mocking us, ah, we're really doing something good. The Rav is not like that. But if you'd be doing it really good, it would bring honor and cover. And even the guy would say, Rakam Chochum, the novel, Nagoya, God loves it. If they're not saying that, then there's something missing in the way that we're doing the business. And therefore, there's an idea of Kiddush Hashem, even for Goya. Or it's full of cases. Shukun Aruch Pasuk, instead of Kiddush. Don't have to give back an Aveda to Goya. But if there's a Kiddush Hashem, or Chas Hashem, or Chil Hashem, Tol Zaku, this mutter, but if there'll be a Kiddush Hashem, or a Kiddush Hashem, then you shouldn't rely on that. We were talking about Kiddush Hashem, or Chil Hashem, the Goyim. Nice, nice. Even by a Goyim, there's an idea of Kiddush Hashem, and Chil Hashem. You never know, never know what can make an impression. You didn't function the way they're supposed to. There's a um, story 
two yeshiva bachrim from Rotten took a walk in the countryside. And um, they met a Goyish uh, Polish farmer. And he said to them, um, where are you from? Tell them we're from the uh, rabbinical seminary. So he said, oh, how's my friend Yisrael Neir? A little taken aback that this Polish farmer of Chaim's name and friend. He said, I, I see you're surprised that I know you're a rabbi. I'll tell you, he said, I was once going in the forest and I heard and it sounded like a terrible, terrible screaming, crying. I thought somebody was being mauled by an animal or something. I went to, to help him. And I see this old man sitting and crying and crying and crying. Terrible. Went over to him and they asked him what the problem was. He told me that, uh, sorry if he upset me or scared me, but uh, he's crying because he just finished a set of books that he wrote and he's afraid that maybe something was wrong in the books and he may cause some Jews to do things that are wrong. So he's crying his heart out to God that he should prevent that from happening. He said, uh, that kind of human being is my friend. So please give regards to my friend Yisrael Neir. You never know what can impress a, a non-Jew. Another story I saw People from the utility boy, the water department in New York were turning off the water in front of somebody's house. He'd pass by and he knew whose house it was. And he said, um, you're turning off the water? He said, I'll be willing to pay the bill. Don't turn off the water. They said, uh, this is your house. This is your family. Your friend? No, I don't know who it is. But we Jews help each other. And if somebody is going to have his water turned off, then I'm willing to pay the bill that that shouldn't happen. The guy laughed and he said, there's a problem in the pipes. We're turning off the water to fix it. <laughs> and he said, he said, but I never heard of such a thing. Somebody's willing to pay somebody else. I don't know who they are. He took the cross off his neck, tore the chain, threw it on the ground, and he said, this is not a religion. That's a religion. The huge guy got it right. Never know. Never know what can make an impression even on a boy. And it see, and that's why according to most Mephorshim, it's going on Goyim too. Ha'ad. Not only Jews are precious. Jews are precious because we're born in Lashem and we have a Torah. But Goyim are also precious because they were Nipra and Selim and Lashem. Ravaran Kotler, famous Maestri. His driver driving him over uh, one of the toll roads in New York. And there are places where you can go uh, Easy Pass or exact change and this place you have to go and uh, get change from a human being so the driver said Baruch Hashem I have the exact change we'll go through the automatic automated toll booth the modern said nothing to it so how would you feel if you saw people going to machines and bypassing you so that person's a, a human being he deserves the covet of us going to a human being and not to a machine. That's covet that breathes. And I'm sure that the person in the toll booth was not a Jew. And I'm sure he definitely was not a Talmud Chacham. So Rav Aaron had covet for Goy, not just for Yidin and not just for other Talmud Chacham. That's why I'm Sukkot. He brings 70 party to protect the nations of the world. And even though we bring them in descending order, we've explained the past, that doesn't mean to give them a stab in the back. We hope you decrease. 
But the ideal is there should be one united nation. That's the way it was before Mikdal Bodom. To work together with Cloud Israel for Avodah Sashem, Kiddush Sashem, God, you do their part, and you do our part together. That's the way the big Mashiach comes. The only reason there's 70 nations is because the Goyim couldn't get together for anything but Abu Zora and bloodshed. So the Rabbi Shalom said, if you can't get together for anything but that, better there should be 70 nations. But the ideal is, as Epo Chalamin, Sofa Brura, Likro Kula Peshem Hashem, Ulo Avdo Shem Echad. We should unite it. So we say, we're bringing these Korbanos to protect you. And eventually, the number of 70 Goyim will decrease until you all unite into one nation and help us serve the Rabbanu Shalom, you doing the things of this world and us injecting the spiritual things of the next world into this world. And that's why the Rabbeinu Yona says, on the Mishnah, having espoused the Shlomo Shal Malchus, a person should dive into the welfare of the government. I'm not talking about governments where there are yidn, but governments where there are no yidn at all. And it won't affect the yid at all. No yid is going to be affected if the hutsis kill the tutsis or the tutsis kill the hutsis. He still should have spouted the Shlomo Shalmah. Because, says the Rabbi Yonna, because a tzaddik is concerned about the welfare of all human beings. That's a tzaddik. Avram Avinu, even though he hated the rishas of the people of Stone, Davin to them. And Shiv says that's called Yashvas. That's why Avram Avinu, the Avos and Imos were called Yishorim. Because it is, aside from being Tzadikim and Hasidim and Amole Torah, they also were Yishorim. And they dealt even with Goy in a straightforward and honest way. And he says it's possible for people to be Tzadikim and Hasidim and Amole Torah and not to be Yishorim. And that's why the second base on the was that's the Sinas Fiyah. Where not only didn't they have respect for Goy, they didn't have respect for Yidin either. That's why the Gemara says that Rabbi Yochanan and Zakai was mocked him Shalom, <coughs> even to a Goy in the Shuk. No one ever chapped him and gave him Shalom before he gave them Shalom. Even a Goy. The idea of Shalom is, Shalom Aleichem means my shlemus depends on you. I can't do it alone. Everybody needs everybody to be able to reach shlemus, even God. And therefore, Yochanan and Zakai acknowledge that. My shlemus depends even on the God who makes the wood, who made the shtender, so I can put my papers on. <coughs> Guarantee you that wasn't yet to cut this wood somewhere in the forest on those woods. The Sefer Haredim brings down the Rabbi Yosef Saramasi, who was the Rebbe of the Radvaz. Why? Because he was Mesim Shalom, Ben Ish Le Ishto, Ben Odom Le Chadero, Afibu Koy. How important it is to say hello to a guy. Two famous mice. Lucia Moretti. And a neighbor. He had a molar. Every day he would pass him in the street. And he would say, Good morning, Herr Moller, to this guy. Every day. He was sent to concentration camp. He had the selection right or left. The Blue Rebbe comes to the head of the line and he looks up and to his surprise the Nazi making the selection is Herr Muller. And Muller looks up and he says good morning Rabiner to the right. Who knows what a hello what a good morning would do other mice said it was a group of shochtim. I think it was 